Hey guys, uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you to talk about the three game EPL slate this morning. Um, I'm trying this um, closer to the kickoff time. Well, not closer to the one hour before the kickoff time to make sure that, you know, we have the starters uh, announced while I'm talking about these. Um, so it should be released within the next two minutes or so. Um, so I think it'll be better this way to um, you know, trying something new. And if you guys like this timing better than, you know, me publishing a video before, um, like way before the lineups come out, um, yeah, just leave, leave me a comment or message me and, you know, feel free to, uh, you know, uh, state your preference. Um, I think like yesterday, Slate, um, I talked about a lot of some of the players that weren't even uh, starting yesterday. So I, I think it kind of, um, created some questions, you know, once the starters came out, but then, like I said, on Discord and our Discord channel through DFS, um, we, you know, provide some insights and comments as when the starters came out. So, like, for example, yesterday for Chelsea, there were a lot of changes. I know that Reese James didn't start. I know that uh, ZX didn't start. So, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of my lineups um, were heavy on Mason Mount and uh, Marcus Alonso who started um, on, the, on the wing and fullback position, same with Loftus Cheek. And they turned out to be great plays. Um, so we, you know, made good good amount of money yesterday. So anyway, so yeah, let's try this today. Um, it's a three game slate, like I said. Um, it's much closer games. There's not a single like uh, minus favorite. Um, they're all very close games. So I think it's a great slate for GPP and kind of have some, you know, have an edge on, over others. So let's, let's dive in. Uh, Brentford is a slight favorite at home uh, against West Ham and Leicester City is a slight favorite at home against Crystal Palace and Norwich City is an underdog at home against Burnley. But like I said, three toss up games. So I think it's very important to uh, um, dissect um, the, the, the player pool today. Amongst these three, three games, um, I really like um, where is it? The Norwich City versus Burnley game. Um, I think most people will go toward the Brentford and West Ham, um, but I really like the Norwich City Burnley game to have uh, the high goal scoring upside. So I'll, I'll probably focus, I'll probably have a little more exposure to that game compared to the other two games. I think the Leicester City and Crystal Palace, I have a feeling that that's going to be just based on the recent games, I, I just feel like that's going to be a low scoring game. So Brentford versus West Ham. So let's side that one in first. Um, Brentford is like a, a slight favorite, which is surprising to me, but it's more of a toss-up odds anyway. West Ham is in the sixth place and Brentford is in the 15th place. Uh, Brentford is kind of like in the safe spot now um, compared to the relegation teams here. They're 11 up on, uh, nine up on uh, Burnley. So I think, um, you know, West, there's more motivation to West Ham in my opinion. Uh, to to win today because um, they can crack potentially in top five, um, you know, with the win and, you know, based on other teams' results up there. So anyway, so let's dive into West Ham first because I think West Ham will probably dictate the possession a little more than Brentford, in my opinion, in my opinion even though they're on the road. Um, I like Jared Bowen, obviously. He's the, you know, he's the set-piece taker for them and he creates a lot of open chance, uh, you know, chances scoring chances in the open play. And after that, it really is up to like Ben Rama and then Mikhail Antonio um, and then Cresswell. I know Cresswell scored in the last game, but um, I just feel like Ben Rama has the more uh, goal scoring upside. Um, so really those three got four guys, Bowen, Antonio, Ben Rama and Cresswell. And then the rest of them are strictly for GPP purposes for now. I mean, I know he can score a goal, but um, he doesn't take enough shots for me to consider him um, compared to like Ben Rama and Antonio. And then Cresswell, I only have him in the pool because he likes to cross the ball. So, and then for Brentford, yeah, I mean, it's, it all starts within the middle here. Christian Eriksen, you know, ever since he joined Brentford, uh, they've been uh, playing a little bit, a little bit better. Um, he takes a lot of their set pieces. He is also pretty good in the open play. Not as good as Jared Bowen, but really Brentford is not a good team. So uh, Erickson does a lot for that team. And then after that, it's all strictly GPP. I think Rico Henry and Rasmussen, like he, they used to cross the ball quite a bit, but they're not anymore. 
they kind of stopped in the last, you know, month or two. And then Janelle sometimes takes set pieces. So, I mean, that could happen. But then if you think Brentford's going to score, I mean, I know West Ham, um, you know, can give up some goals. So if you think Brentford's going to score goals, Tony or Mboimo, uh would be the choices um, for goal scoring chances. But Tony is more of a striker and Mboimo, uh is more of a playmaker. So Mboimo has a lot more, uh, has a higher floor compared to Tony. But Tony is a better striker who is more likely to score a goal. And he will most likely take penalty kicks too. So there's that. And then Leicester City Crystal Palace is the second game on the slate. Um, I think Leicester City, let's dive in first because uh, they've been so up and down. They've been so inconsistent here. You can see their neck to neck on the standings, nine and 10th. Um, I mean, I think they're both tied at 37 points on the table. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be a toss up, but, you know, just given like the sub, the, given the injuries here, I know Olise is out today, I think. Let me see. Let me refresh the starting lineup since they just came out. Um, yeah, he's out still. So, and then Madison's playing, Dewsbury Hall is playing, Telemann is playing, Daka is finally starting, which he should have been the last game. Um, so I really like Leicester City at home here. Um, I do think they're going to dictate the possession, even though Crystal Palace hasn't been that bad, really. He's, they've been actually pretty good, uh, playing well, much better lately. Um, but Leicester City, I don't know, it's like next to neck. Like I said, they're, they're more inconsistent. Um, but now with all those starters back, I mean, obviously Madison is a great play here today. And then Dewsbury Hall and then Tielemans. Tielemans has kind of seeded his, uh, you know, uh, that he's uh, – duties to Madison um, here, but I just feel like um, those are three good plays in my opinion. And then Daka, if you think Leicester City will score. Um, I don't know if I'll be, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'll have some exposure to Luke Thomas and James Justin, uh, their fullbacks who can cross the ball maybe between one and five times probably. Um, so it's, there's not much upside, but you know, he, they have better, you know, higher floor than these center backs, obviously. And then Crystal Palace, it all starts with Zaha and then Gallagher. Um, I know AU started last game. He didn't perform well. So I think it's going to be down to Gallagher and Zaha. And they've been really disappointing the last couple games. Um, I played a lot of them. But Gallagher is not the same player he used to be early in the season where he was just racking up points. Um, I know Zaha, you know, it's, it's, he's always a threat offensively, but He's just not, um, he just doesn't have the supporting cast for him to uh, thrive under. So I think that's gonna, that's been hurting him, his uh, upside a little bit. And Crystal Palace is not the type of team they like to like possess the ball and, you know, try to score. Really, they're more of a counter-attacking team. So it's really hard to rely on that kind of play style for DFS purposes. So I'll have to favor Leicester City today. And like I said, for Leicester, it's going to be Madison, Dewsbury, and Tieleman, and then maybe one of the fullbacks. And then, like I said, for Crystal Palace, it's going to be Gallagher, Zaha, and then maybe AU, and then hey, I'm not interested in their fullbacks. And like I said, I think this game is going to be a sneaky one um, to target. Um, I like I like Norwich City or Burnley. I like both teams to uh, play, play well today. Here, if you see on the standings, they're at the bottom of the regulated relegation zone, right? So I just feel like... <laughs> You know, I also do videos for League of Legends slates, and I see that I say that as a toilet bowl. It's more like a you know clown fiesta where they just fool around, but it's kind of similar to that here, where they're gonna, you know, both teams are you know they don't really have that much to play for. I think. I mean, obviously Burnley does. I mean, they can kind of climb out, climb themselves out of this hole by winning the game today. But then, I mean, Norwich knows that Burnley is not a good team, so I think that's gonna be a pretty competitive match. Um, pretty wide open match. I think that's what I'm expecting. You know, a lot of open uh, field scoring chances created and all that. So let's dive into Norwich's uh, player pool. Um, it all starts with Rashika here, actually. And then after that, I mean, like maybe Pookie, if you think they're going to score or have penalty kicks, Pookie takes them. Uh, Rashika, Pookie, and then maybe McLean. Um, and then between these three central midfielders, I prefer uh, Malou. Um, and then their fullbacks are not bad. So, and then for Burnley, it's going to be 
It's going to be tough because, um, what's his name? McNeil. McNeil out. For some reason, McNeil has been sitting out the last two games. Um, they just didn't look that great, even in the last game without McNeil. I know they beat Everton 3-2, to two, but their defense was so bad. Um, so I think Everton should have won that game. Um, I just feel like that also creates – that's going to create a lot of chances for Norwich City. But then at the same time, Burnley themselves is not that bad uh, at running offense. Um, so I, it all starts with Maxwell Cornett. He's their star player now without McNeil. And then after that, Westwood takes some take, take, take some uh, set pieces. And then Josh Brownhill sometimes takes set pieces, but he's a better open play uh, play, I think, in my opinion. And then Weghorst, I prefer Weghorst over Rodriguez, but Weghorst, you know, is more of a traditional striker, in my opinion. He's, you know, big guy, big physique compared to Jay Rodriguez, small and fast. And so anyway, so yeah, I mean, it all, it all starts with Cornette, Brownhill, uh, Cornette, Westwood, Brownhill, and then maybe one of the strikers. I'm not interested in Aaron Lennon. He's washed up, in my opinion. And then maybe Charlie Taylor or Loughton, the, one of the fullbacks. So yeah, it's been 10 minutes since the starters came out. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Hopefully you guys watch this, watch this video before the starters, um, you know, before building your lineups, but hopefully that gives you enough time to, you know, build a lineup and ask any questions you may have. Yeah, so that's all I got for you guys today. And let me know if you guys have any questions. Bye-bye.